Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name's Critter XD. In today's video, as promised, I'm going to be watching and reacting to the reveal of the voice actors from The Legend of Vox Machina. Now, some of them I figured out, some of them I know about, so I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to talk about how much I appreciated the voice work in this season because it was so, so good. Friendly reminder, I am a Critical Role noob. I went into Vox Machina not having watched or listened to any Critical Role stuff at all. I want to get into it if I can, though I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. Other than buying Kith and Kin, I'm excited to read the background of Vex and Vax. Other than that, though, I don't know if I want to start in on a campaign or just read summaries or whatever, or just wait for season two of Vox Machina because I loved season one. So without further ado, I would just ask to please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications if you like what you see. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's do this. And then now we have the opportunity to This is the DM guy. Life. So and I've I gathered. All of these NPCs. Oh, she kind of looks like Kayla. Have a piece of Matt in them. The guests we've had come in and bring some of these Vax. One of those NPCs that is beloved by all is Sean Gilmore of Gilmore's oh Glorious gosh, Grog. Guns. And after a lot of back and forth with Matt, Matt himself. Wow, he changes his voice a lot to become Grog, doesn't he? Someone else to take a shot at this beloved character. I wanted to make sure that his importance to the story was given the care that it deserved. We really wanted to find somebody who is funny and still full of life and uh, she's so she's it. she's Sinema Pike Hotra has done an incredible job of portraying Gilmore. Sean Gilmore I've even got to look alike a little bit imagination a naughty sexy mischievous cat if he's not selling his wares he's selling himself Sunil brings that guy looks perfect charisma respect I feel very close to Gilmore just full of energy and life and ver that is, <laughs> is he voice ver acting from a closet <laughs> very unique uh, <laughs> that we still recognize him as the gilmore that we fell in love with but scanlan spin a new take that has he sounds so different so they change their voices to become themselves in the show the voice really hits everything that you want out of gilmore i'm, I'm hersey <laughs> he sounds different too that's so funny I wonder if they tried to make the cartoons kind of look like the actors. Some of them, like, kind of do. Especially Kalith. I don't think I've seen him in anything. All these makeshift sound studios are awesome. Felicia Day is a perfect example of someone you will hear rattling around Taldori. You'll hear her what? doing her level best to defend Amon against its enemy. No kidding? In the early episodes. For Amon, as one. Oh, would not be here I didn't pick that one up, I don't think. She took chance on us. She saw the possibility, and we knew that we wanted to use her. We also she is the that best. Okay, we'll take you in. But the bear waits outside. Good old Bobby Hall got to play some guards in some of the earlier episodes. He blew us away. He was, God, he was what, what have I heard also him stepping in? Stepping up for a character favorite from the Vox Machina campaign is Eugene Bird as Jarrett. Jarrett got that a guy. Show. Yes. A Not Diggle. Diggle's brother. He did so well. Eugene Gosh, now that I see like his face, like, yes, game. obviously it was him all along. Gears of War with me, and I was so excited. That some fans may not be super familiar with, but he did reside on the Council of Taldore, and we had to turn to a big voice for his character. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, David Tennant, and this I'm was Jen an amazing Green. surprise. When David I found out that this was David Tennant, it was incredible. I think it's fantastic. I think this is how all shows should be pitched. We've also had guest appearances by Tony Hale. Of Veep fame is our fence. He what? Into this I didn't know that was him. Fence. So He's brilliant. so good in Veep. Head cleric is Anjali Bamani. See, she kind of looks like her character. With character. Don't want to forget Cassandra DiRolo, sister of Percy, played by Esme Okay, Pee I don't Wild. think I've seen her in the anything. Tavern Keeper, the goddess voice of the Everlight is Tracy Toms. Incredible voice, incredible performer. She and was one great. One Punch Man himself, Max Middleman as Desmond. <laughs> one Max Punch Man? The Briarwoods. Bryn, There's so many of these I missed. The series, is voiced by Stacey Raymond. Also in the Whitestone crew as Keeper Yenon. 
we have Gina yes Torres, uh your first take from suits really someone of great calm and spirituality but she has a much greater agenda her voice she is tricks, fabulous so make her a badass when it came to the character of Archibald Desne, we made some changes to the character overall and also wanted to push this young... Yes, 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 yes! ...with the voice print that we thought would do it justice. We're big fantasy fans, so again, in Shooting for the Moon, we reached out to Dominic Monaghan, and he said yes. <laughs> the fact that he said Archibald yes. Archibald uh. is a kind of buccaneering, swarthy man of short stature. He tends to let his fists his, and his, his voice is perfect. do the talking. He just sounds like such a badass dwarf. Then we need to make our next move count. Gather He's perfect. Ah. Bodied fighter in Whitestone. We have a hobbit on our show. It's, it's amazing. It's so also, amazing. Root, we are huge fans of his from everything from office space to Barry. The way that he chews and works with his words gave a whole new shape to the character of Anders. Tick tock, tick tock. Oh my gosh. Time. Vedmire it's a stapler guy. This is a stapler. Give him a stapler. I can't believe that. And we knew with a half giant of his size, we needed a voice to match it. You can't go wrong. With yes, the house, he was so good. Doctor Anna Ripley is another one of the Briarwood henchmen that uh, we knew we needed to bring to life. And Kelly, who does an incredible job of that. Don't play ah. dumb. It won't end well for you. God, Kelly is a villain. She was it's so a good. Really sharp performance. So two of the NPCs that obviously jumped to What else was she in? Somebody, oh my gosh, in the comments, please let me know. I know I've seen her before. We quickly turned to um, an angelic voice from Game of Thrones in Dear of Her? Oh. She has this, this grace and this prim quality She's to her. Amazing. She's amazing. We don't even know what the creature is. She's got a beautiful voice. I'm so jealous of her voice. Amazing to hear the woman come to life. And then her partner in crime, Kima of Vord, played by the incredibly funny Stephanie Beatriz. She has Isn't she from Brooklyn Nine Nine? Is that her? Dead Stephanie is a she uh, if she's not her from Brooklyn Nine Nine, Playing she looks like her. Intro. I'm not she sure because like, I haven't actually watched much Brooklyn Nine Nine. And... Another immensely talented voiceover actress, the illustrious Great Griffin. Uh, she is our Delilah Briarwood. Villains, I've been playing them for decades, and they're just so deliciously wonderful to play. Delilah is a very complicated. It's her. Villain. I liken her to sort it's of like a, a big cat. I'll kill you when when I'm feeling like it, but right now I'm just having fun. Playing she villains for decades, Azula being one the of them. Subtlety and that brimming intensity and in threat, while still keeping that cordial, presentary upper crust. She relishes in the in the villainous aspect. Just look at that she surroundings. Really the heart. She gets it. She does do horrible, horrible things, but it's all in the name of love. So you have to root for her just a little bit. Do you? The fact that there are all these critters who are invested in critters it means that. It needs to be seen. It needs to be made. I'm so glad that I watched this. Some of the voice actors I didn't even know about. They weren't even spoiled in the comments for me. So, like, the guy from Veep? I can't believe he's in this. That's so funny. Gosh, and you know, I guess it was probably really different to be an original critter watching the campaign and having Matt Mercer do all of those voices, right? They filled in so many of those voices with actual voice actors, you know, for example women like doing the queen or whatever the the blonde lady i guess she's not really a queen and you know like you you probably couldn't have him do all the voices in a show people would start to notice uh and so wow they really filled out that cast with some incredible people that i didn't even realize like the the woman who was a one of the sand snakes or whatever from game of thrones i didn't know she was in this either um I, I, I love that I was spoiled on all that because that was really, really fun. It just goes to show all the, the quality of actors and vo voice actors that they got for this. How you know, passionate, obviously, they were to be able to sell it to people who presumably didn't necessarily know about it. But then to have them come and just absolutely slay it and really understand all the characters, it was... Uh, you know, honestly, I, I want to rewatch the whole season because I, I was watching it week by week and doing my reaction videos, and I feel like now I want to just take it all in kind of at once. Um, sometime soon, I'll definitely do that. Kudos to Matt Mercer, though. I'm sure doing all of those characters at first was probably pretty intense. I have never been a dungeon master, so I don't actually know, you know, 
how hard it is, but I'm sure it's probably pretty hard to keep it different. I'm sure because all of them are voice actors that he changes things up for each character. Um, and I wonder if it was jarring for critters who actually watch Critical Role or listen to Critical Role to hear some of the characters that they loved being voiced by somebody that wasn't Matt. So if you want to weigh in on that, let me know in the comments. Was it jarring or were you like, yeah, no, they did well enough. They, they seamlessly fit in and it made tons of sense. So that's it for me today. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this. I, once again, cannot wait until season two. Super looking forward to finding out when that's going to come out. In the meantime, there are other shows and plenty of other critical role stuff including kith and kin that i will be reading soon that i'll probably be touching base on now and again on this channel so stick around and last but not least i want to give a massive shout out and thank you to my generous patrons and members without you i would be way less motivated your support means the world to me if you want to join this esteemed group of individuals you can do so on my patreon or by becoming a member on youtube we have monthly hangouts in my Discord for fam level patrons. And if you're a member on YouTube, you have access to super sick emojis for whenever I go live. Not to mention, you get a shout out whenever I do pre recorded YouTube videos. That's it for me today. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.